You're listening to The Response, a podcast and documentary series exploring the remarkable communities that arise in the aftermath of disasters. I'm your host, Tom Llewellyn, and today we're bringing you an extended interview with Sebastian Mayer, the chief resilience officer for the city of Paris. June and July had the two highest global average temperatures on record, presenting further evidence of the climate crisis, which is becoming harder and harder to ignore. During these two months of climate change-fueled heat waves, Paris had its hottest day ever, and there were nearly 1,500 heat-related deaths across the nation of France. I spoke at length with Sebastian about the six main resilience challenges in Paris, their three-tiered approach to meeting those challenges, and how they are empowering the residents to directly participate and in many cases lead the process. Along the way, we discussed the 100 Resilient Cities program, community fridges, the role of social cohesion, and his view on the inextricable link between climate change and economic inequality. Before playing the interview, I would just like to take a moment and encourage you to visit us at shareable.net. In the past few weeks, the Shareable team has released several new resources, including our free guide for turning community spaces into resilience hubs, a new audio documentary episode of The Response about the 2017 Puebla earthquake in Mexico City, and our first documentary film. You can watch the trailer and sign up to host a community screening on our website. And now, my interview with Sebastian. Well, thank you so much for taking uh, some time with me and appreciate you doing this interview. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Yeah, so just to start, how's your week going? Very well, but um, I'm expecting it to end because I'm going on vacation afterwards and it's getting long. Yeah. <laughs> to be the first part of the year was really dense, uh, but really interesting as well. Yeah, like what, what led to that intensity? I think that the resilience and adaptation issues or goals are getting stronger in the opinion both of the population and the elected officials. And so what we've been doing for a couple of years now in Paris, which is embedding the resilience approach within the whole city organization and projects, is becoming more and more relevant for everyone because it works, actually. And we just faced uh, two important heat waves, we reached records and the highest temperatures that had never been measured. So all these issues are becoming more and more concrete for the population. And so when we are saying that we should be more prepared, more aware about what's coming, and that we have all together to be at first conscious about what's happening, and then committed in doing things to tackle these issues and to answer to these main challenges, I think it's really bad to say, but such events are helping the cause because it's getting more concrete for everyone. Yeah, we're definitely seeing that kind of globally. And, and one of the significant actions that I've noticed has been happening over the last few months is this rise of cities declaring climate emergencies. And I saw that Paris joined, you know, now there's over 650 municipalities that have declared a climate emergency and Paris just declared theirs on July 10th. And one of my questions for you is how you feel that might help your work to build greater resilience, just having the city make that extra commitment. To be completely honest, this won't help my work. This is a political thing, which is important because the population needs to be aware, and that's the role of the mayors and elected officials to highlight the issues and the fact that we definitely need to shift to transition. But in my daily activities, anyway, we are always under emergency. And we've been working to change the city on a daily basis independently from this kind of announces. We've been turning all of the 700 schoolyards in Paris into cool islands, uh, but we've been doing that already and we will keep on whatever happens. So I think this is complementary, that's important. But from my side, which is the administrative and technical one, it's not that determinant in the way uh, I've been working every day. That was just a taste. To listen to the full episode, please visit the responsepodcast.org or find the response wherever you get your podcasts.